In this Wise Out Short, we're going to show you how you could actually record your manager's comments and then store them for use in your report. Using Power Apps, you can do this and much more. In this Wise Out Short, we're going to show you how. So here I've got my report all ready for my manager to view. And what I would like to do is allow them to write comments in. Now you could also use this technique for writing back data, but we're going to keep it simple for this example. The first thing I need is somewhere to actually store this information. And again, you could use SharePoint, you could use SQL. But because I want you to be able to take a copy of this away with you, I'm going to do it with Excel. If you are using Excel, you do have to have a table created already, although there are things like Power Automate, which would allow you to do that on the fly. I would also recommend that when you're creating your Excel table, put in some dummy data as well. It will make life a lot easier if you can see some data already in there. We can delete that data at a later date. With that created, I'm going to store this in OneDrive. You could also use this in Dropbox, and that would work exactly the same way. With that loaded in Power BI, we can get started. The visual that we're looking for is the Power Apps visual, as Power BI natively can't actually write back data. If you're using an older version of Power BI, you may have trouble seeing this as it's no longer available via the store separately. You may need to update to follow along with this. Create your Power App and position it on your page wherever suitable. I've got this nice little gap already prepared, so I'm going to put my visual in there. You might think it's a little bit small, but remember we can use focus mode to zoom in when required. The first thing you have to do is provide it some data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a dummy measure that passes something in. In this particular scenario, I'm not interested in storing information from the report, so I don't need to pass in columns themselves. So I'm going to go to my measure table, I'm going to create a new measure, and all I'm going to do is pass in today's date. If I wanted to store the time as well, I could use now, but I'm only interested in the date, so I'm just going to do today. With that created, drag your newly created measure into your visual. As long as you have at least one bit of data stored in here, you'll now be prompted to either choose an existing app or create a new one. If you're just using this to play around, I would recommend getting yourself a developer or community environment. They're free and it only takes a few seconds to sign up, although depending on your organisational settings, you might need approval from one of the admins. I'm going to choose my existing playground environment and I'm going to choose to create a new app. I'm going to launch this in my browser. It will automatically create what's known as a gallery. The gallery will have all the data that you passed in inside of it. This is going to be useful in future videos when we want to do things like change and write data back in real time. But for us, we're actually just starting from scratch, so I'm going to delete this gallery. I don't want that. I'm going to change the name of the screen to make this a little bit easier. So I'm going to have this as past feedback. To present my existing feedback, I'm going to go to the insert tab. And about halfway along, I have something known as a gallery. There are several different forms of galleries. I'm going to go for a blank vertical gallery. Now what I need to do is attach this to data. And if you remember, we created that table in the OneDrive. So I'm going to do OneDrive, but again, if you had something like Dropbox, you could also use that. From here, it may ask you to log in. If it does, log in with your Microsoft account and you'll be able to connect to your OneDrive. And here, I'm going to navigate into the Power BI folder and select that manager's commentary. If you haven't created a table at this point, you won't see anything in this list. I'm going to tick feedback and choose connect. From here, I now need to populate this 
gallery. This is going to show me all of my rows of data in a little preview list. I'm going to move mine down a little bit because I'll need space later on and I'm going to drag the bottom of this down. To add objects into the gallery, you need to select the top section of the gallery. We can now add items in here. Nothing too fancy, I'm going to go to the insert tab and I'm going to choose label. I'm going to choose twice because I want two different labels. The second one that was brought through there is the manager name. So in this case, Dave. The one that was brought in first though is rather messy. It's a bit too long for a preview. It's brought through the comments column. So I'm going to get rid of the comments column. I'm going to say this item, which means the row in the gallery. And I'm going to replace that with the date. Now what I want to do is I want them to be able to add in new rows. Because right now, it's not that interesting. So I'm going to go back to the insert tab. I'm going to make sure I click outside of the gallery. I'm going to go to icons and I'm going to choose an add to allow myself to add new rows. I'm going to position that in the top right hand corner so it's nice and visible for someone using this report. And now I need a new page. So I'm going to go to the insert tab again, new screen, and I'm going to choose a form because I want to add new data. I'm going to change this from screen to to add comment. Up the top, you'll see you've got a title. I'm going to click on that title and I'm going to change it from saying title to saying enter comment. From here, you'll see my form is currently not connected to any data. So let's give that a little click. If you wanted your data source of the gallery on the first page to not match the data source on the app, you absolutely can do that. But for us, we want the same data source. Right hand side, data source, and choose your feedback table. Now I need somewhere for someone to type in data. So I'm gonna go over to the right hand side to my data source, and below that you see fields. I'm gonna click on edit fields, and all the fields in that table become available. Click on add field, and I'm going to tick them in the order in which I want them to appear. So I would like the date entered at the top, the manager entering the data underneath, and I would like at the very bottom my comments. Choose add. And now I've got all my fields available. Let's make that comments a little bit bigger because it's a bit small at the moment. I also want to freeze the date entered. I don't want someone to just willy nilly type in whatever date. I'd like to just capture whatever date they're typing in right now. So I'm going to click not on the drop down of the date, but the cell behind it. In the top left hand corner, I'm going to use the drop down that currently says height, and I'm going to change that to default. You'll see that it's currently locked. All of our fields by default are going to be locked. So if you go over to the right hand side, click on your advanced options, you'll see a little padlock. It's as easy as giving it a click to unlock the settings. From here, I'm going to replace the default. I'm going to say, you know what? Don't have this. I'm going to instead have now. Now we'll capture both the date and time that they're editing this. Now, I don't want them to be able to falsify what they're up to. If you wanted them to be able to change it, you absolutely could. But I'm going to go to the drop down again and change this from default to display mode. Currently, the display mode is set to edit. I don't want them to edit this. So I'm going to get rid of parent.display mode. I'm going to say display mode dot and I'm going to choose view. And that means they can see it, but they can't change it. Now I need to tell this to save, click on the little tick in the top right hand corner and you'll see there we've got submit form. So this is going to write the data back. I'm going to click in there and I'm going to use a semicolon to indicate I'm not finished, I want another command to happen. So this command will be refresh and in the brackets I can choose from the data sources in my app. I want to refresh the connection to that Excel file. Close your bracket. And then the last thing I want to do is go to the other page so I can actually see this feedback. Semicolon. And then it was 
navigate and we choose the page that we want to see. So in this case, pass feedback. Close your bracket. If they change their mind and they don't want to add a comment, I'm going to go to the X symbol. And I could put in here navigate if I wanted to do some kind of fancy transition, but I'm just going to use back. That's going to take them to the page they were last on. In this case, it's going to be the previous page, the past feedback. So from here, all I need to do is now connect my two pages together. So I'm going to go to past feedback. And then here I need my handy little plus icon. So I'm going to click on my plus icon and on select, I would like this to first set the new form. This is going to set my form mode to new. So rather than editing existing data, we're going to be adding new rows. So new form, edit form one, close my bracket, semicolon. And then of course I actually need to go to that page. So let's have a little navigate in there. And the page I want to go to is my add comment page. Close my bracket. To give this a go, you can use F5 or click the play button in the top right hand corner. Click on your little add icon and you'll see you can now complete the details. Sam, and what does Sam say? Uh, there is worrying trends. One of the things that I don't like about the default is you'll notice that it puts your great big box and it's got your data right in the middle. So I'm going to use the little X to X out of here, or you can click on the escape key. I'm going to click on my comment box. I'm going to go over to the right hand side to properties. I'm going to go down to properties and I'm going to change this from mode single line to multi-line. And that'll mean that I can now type in the entire box. You can also run your app by actually holding the Alt key. So if I hold Alt over the little tick, give that a click. You'll see it can trigger those buttons without having to go to the faff of running it. And I can see my new feedback has been entered. What I can't see though is I can't actually see the comments. The reason I didn't do this is because they'll take up a lot of room. And if you've got loads and loads of fields you want them to complete, it can look a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to edit the gallery and I'm going to click in the top section. From here, I'm going to go to the insert tab. And I'm going to add a new icon and let's have a little, this little zoom icon, a little magnifying glass. If I add it into this top section, it's going to be added to every row in here. What I'd like to do is when they click on this, them go to a brand new page. So I'm going to go up the top and I'm going to say on select, do the same as the parent. No, 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 no. I'm going to change this. I'm going to say, I would like you to navigate. And I want them to navigate, not to add a comment or pass feedback to show details. Now I haven't actually created that page yet. So it gives me a red squiggle, but that's nothing to worry about. From here, click away, go to your insert tab, new screen. And for this new screen, I'm going to have a blank screen. I'm going to want to change this so it has the same name as I typed in. So that was my show details. And in here, I want another form. I didn't use the quick one because the quick one will always create an edit form. Instead, if you go to insert halfway along, forms use the drop down and we want a display form this time over on the right hand side data source we're going to use the drop down and we're going to choose feedback the fields we want we're going to click on edit fields and we're going to add all three i'm going to choose date entered manager then comments as the order i want them in choose add close this down and you see we've actually got no information I would like to show the information for whichever item has been selected. To do this, top left hand corner, use the drop down of data source and change that to item. Then what I want to do is I want to set this to whichever one was selected, whichever one they clicked on in the gallery. So I'm going to do gallery, 
gallery two dot selected and you see as if by magic my information all fills Last thing I need to do to this page is I want a way of going back to the previous page. So I'm going to go up to my insert again, go to my icons. I'm going to do the same thing as last time. Scroll down to the back button. And onto this back button, I'm going to say on select back. And that'll take me to the previous page I was on. With that all done, you can then publish this so if we go to file and we want to do save as and we're going to save this as manager feedback report you can save this to the cloud or you can save it to your local computer i want to save this to the cloud and i'm going to click on save and from here i can then share this it does not automatically confer all of the access rights from the Power BI report. You do also have to share this one separately. From here, if I go back to my Power BI report, I can see all my rows of data. If I want to zoom in, I can click on the focus mode in the top right hand corner and I'll see all my rows of data. If I want to examine some data more closely, I can click on the little magnifying glass and I'll get a little summary with the expanded details. If I click on the back icon, I want to add more data. I can click on the little plus icon. I can type in who's adding the data. I can type in their comments. From there, if I click on the little tick icon, it will save that data and then it will show those comments along with the rest of the managers. I hope you've enjoyed this YSL short, and I hope to see you next time.